Dr. O, during the uh, presentations today at Oklahoma 360, the CME Symposium, uh, you presented a talk on the myth and the sciences behind lifestyle medications in relation to glaucoma. Could you give us an overview of what, you're, what you discussed? Sure. Uh, I, you know, I chose the topic because it's a question a lot of patients always ask us at the end of um, our visits with them. They want to know, what can I do? Are there lifestyle changes that I can make uh, in order to improve my glaucoma? So, you know, there's a lot of things I'm sure many different ophthalmologists will tell their patients, and I wanted to explore more deeply what the data behind those recommendations might be. So we looked at things uh, such as exercise, um, yoga positions, acupuncture. Um, also, uh, there was a new study recently looking at uh, it, uh, intensive blood pressure control compared to regular blood pressure control. So I can briefly talk about each of these uh, uh, ver uh, various um, modifications. So exercise has been shown to transiently lower eye pressure uh, during or right after exercise. Um, the, the lowering is generally um, not sustained if you don't continue your exercise regimen. And also there was a meta-analysis that was done that showed that exercise in sedentary individuals was, um, had a better effect on lowering IOP than those who are already normally active. So I think that's important for clinicians um, to, to be able to tell their patients, especially patients who don't feel like they're exercisers or don't want to get motivated to move, that it's actually patients who aren't moving at all that maybe do the best um, in terms of eye pressure lowering with exercise. Yoga is also a common question I get. I had a patient who was a yoga instructor and she wanted to know what to do. I mean, it's her livelihood, you know, and she knew that yoga positions were, may increase eye pressure. And there'd been a lot of studies, uh, several studies done looking at shoulder stand or head stands where the head is really inverted and that can actually double your eye pressure. Uh, we already knew that, but recently there was a study um, out of a group in New York that looked at more common positions such as downward dog um, or just uh, an inverted position where your legs are in the air and your um, head is on the ground, but not, not a shoulder stand or anything mm -hmm. intense like that. And what they found was actually downward dog was the most um, susceptible to raising eye pressure, almost I think uh, up to 10 millimeters of mercury, both in healthy individuals and in patients who had glaucoma. But there's still no evidence suggesting that um, this kind of eye pressure increase, so I should mention that after a few minutes of rest, the, the eye pressures all return to normal. So um, there's still no evidence to suggest that that kind of activity is detrimental to people's glaucoma. We know there are lots of different activities that will short-term increase your eye pressure that may or may not have a long-term effect on glaucoma. So I think um, it's hard to make any you know, definite statements to patients about whether they should be avoiding yoga, because yoga can be very good. A lot of people enjoy it. It's good for stress and um, mental well-being. Um, another topic we looked at uh, was acupuncture. A lot of uh, patients in San Francisco and the Bay Area are into uh, alternative medicines. Um, and there was recently a prospective study done out of the Stein Eye Institute that showed that um, there probably is not any long-term benefit for acupuncture. They actually enrolled patients uh, to receive 12 treatments of acupuncture. So it was a pretty rigorous study design, and um, without going into the details, I think it pretty um, convincingly showed, at least with this study, that there was no benefit to acupuncture. Um, another question people always ask is about diet. Is there something that I could be eating? Should I be taking vitamins? And this is a huge topic. I only explore a little bit. Should I, you know, people ask about alcohol, caffeine, smoking marijuana. Um, but I decided to just focus on uh, one recent study that was just published a couple weeks ago. This is a group um, out of uh, the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary that looked at um, uh, a large study um, looking at whether or not green leafy vegetable consumption um, affected glaucoma risk. And it showed that a diet um, high in green leafy vegetables actually does lower your risk of glaucoma. And I think that's a fairly, it doesn't, doesn't answer the question about someone who already has glaucoma and whether or not eating more um, green leafy vegetables is helpful, but um, it is a very easy and um, you know, not likely to have many detrimental effects type of intervention to make. And the last uh, study I highlight is a study outside of the ophthalmology literature. It's a um, recent trial that was 
uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, looking at standard versus intensive blood pressure control. So most people have hypertension in the U.S., and you know it's a super common problem. Their blood pressure um, targets are usually about 140 systolic, 140 millimeters of mercury. And so this study was comparing whether more intensive blood pressure control, 120 millimeters of mercury, would be better for um, patient outcomes. This study excluded patients with diabetes and history of stroke, so um, it's not necessarily applicable to everybody, but it did show that patients who undergo intensive blood pressure control, one systolic blood pressure is less than 120 millimeters of mercury, had better cardiovascular outcomes as well as lower risk of death. And so I think it, there's going to be a huge shift in the way internists, family doctors, primary care doctors treat their patients, and the question is, is what does that mean for our glaucoma patients? Because we know that lower blood pressure, um, especially lower diastolic blood pressure, um, can adversely affect your glaucoma risk and perhaps even your glaucoma. And in the study, they actually showed that some of the bad side effects of having very low uh, or, or intensive blood pressure control was um, uh, hypotension or syncope. Um, so uh, the issue, of course, is you know, paying attention to patients as they walk into the clinic and finding out if they're undergoing more intensive blood pressure control, because those may be the patients who, even with good glaucoma control, may be still worsening. And it may be because their blood pressure is being, um, you know, drawn down even lower. You presented a lot of information during this talk. I, what I'm curious about is, should doctors now, after hearing this, Shouldn't they make an effort to look at doc a patient's lifestyle choices and sit down and consult with them uh, in, hel in helping them address their glaucoma? I, yeah, I think definitely it's always an important question because patients want to know and get advice from their doctors about these sort of lifestyle issues. Um, I think that there are certain lifestyle changes that we have better evidence for, others that we don't. And my general rule of thumb is if I believe that that lifestyle modification is not going to adversely affect somebody, somebody. Even if we don't have the best evidence for it, I think it's still uh, worth recommending. For example, the study on green leafy vegetables, as well as some previous studies um, in that uh, vein, um, you, you know, it would still be great to have a prospective study looking at patients and their consumption of these nutrients and whether or not their glaucoma worsens, and we still don't have that data. But I don't think recommending to a patient to have a healthy diet, eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, and eat a lot of green leafy vegetables, I don't think that's going to be, do them any harm. So I definitely advocate that to my patients. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time. Thanks.